Hi, um, my name is Graeme Robertson. I, I'm a photographer that works for The Guardian. I've been working for The Guardian since about 2005, uh, but I've been a photographer for almost 20 years now. I think portrait photography is all about the person, you know. Sometimes there's two ways you can look at it. You can either have somebody set up, you can have an organised sort of session with somebody in a studio or you spend weeks, months in negotiations with that person of what to do, how it will look, etc. Or you have the situation that you 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 turn up and then you 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 scope something to do and you try and sort of gauge what that person is like, what how far you could push that person. Uh, and sometimes, you know, things come to you, you know, things come to you that you might want to do a certain sort of, a certain sort of picture. So, I think with portrait photography, it is about the person. Um, it, it can be, uh, you know, you need to sort of understand what that person's all about. Uh, you know, if it's um, what they do, what their life's about, you know, uh, how much time you've got. There's so many variables to do with portrait photography. Um, uh, I think a lot of the time I have to sort of really think of my feet. Um, so that means being very organised with my time, uh, understanding where I'm going, uh, what's around, uh, what equipment I have. I'm always very organised with what I bring so that I can sort of shoot at any sort of any position or, or, or any time. Um, or on that other hand, you have that sort of set up sort of portrait that you have weeks or months or days to sort of organise an idea that you can then try and make that sort of person, celebrity, uh, do something for you. You know, I'm a, I'm a people's person. I love people. It's one of the reasons that I love portrait photography. Um, if I turn up at a job or um, uh, either for my organisation or for a private client and that person isn't in the best of moods, never ever, when I leave that room they're probably in a good mood. You know, I have got, I enjoy people, I can relax them, I'm not the sort of person to come in and start shooting. If I can, if I can gauge that person just needs a little bit more of me, I won't take a picture of them straight away. I'll have a cup of tea, I'll hang out with them, chat to them, gauge where I am. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a, a, a grade A sort of celebrity or some, you know, everybody needs a little bit of different sort of um, attention. Um, so when PR say, you know, this, this person's only got this amount of time, I don't really listen to that anymore. I used to when I was a bit younger. Now I know that it's, it's up to me and that person to, to build a very small relationship in a very small amount of time. You know, I've got hundreds of stories of, of PRs coming into my studio saying, you've got two minutes, you've got two minutes. And then me spending the first two minutes chatting to that person and spending half an hour, an hour, sometimes longer with that person because they're having fun. Um, uh, maybe not even fun, but they're enjoying the experience. You know, so I'm a people's person. You know, um, a lot of portrait photographers uh, and photographers in general maybe see it as just a technical thing. You know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and they don't have that interaction with the person. Uh, I have the technical ability, but I also think the actual, the, the, the relationship you have with that person is probably the most important thing. It's a tricky time at the moment, you know? It's a tricky time to, to, to get in to the industry at a certain level, that's for sure. I think that a lot of young photographers are making a lot of mistakes because they're so desperate to, to get in uh, to that sort of high level sort of photography. I think that the advice that I would give to, to, to young photographers these days is to shoot your own stuff. Don't, don't, it doesn't matter what people are saying you should do, 
achieve your own stuff. People are very important. If you want to be a portrait photographer, you should be shooting people. You should be realizing what that what that is to be shooting people. Um, I think the mistake that young photographers do is they rush. They rush into it. You're going to be a photographer for the rest of your life. You know, it's not a career that lasts for five years, ten years. It's not. It's not even a career. It's a lifestyle. It's it, you know. I want to be buried with a camera. You know, it's that. It'll. It'll be. It'll, it's forever. So take your time. Take your time. Enjoy it. If you rush and make a mistake too early, there's there's consequences to that. You know, there's consequences consequences to that. I think that if you want to get into the 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 media, you know, newspapers, magazines, etc. I think that the the best way to go is is small first. You know, small agency, a small newspaper. Make your mistakes there. Make your mistakes where nobody can see them. Then, when you're ready, then you can go on and do your own stories. And then that's how the world's going now. No, you know, nobody's going to go and, as I call, spoon feed you now. You know, 20 years ago, I would do, every week I would get a phone call. Do you want to go here? Do you want to go there? This is happening. Do you want to go to this? Do you want to go to that? All over the world. That doesn't happen anymore. But that doesn't mean that there's the stories aren't there. That means that you need to get off your arse and you need to do it yourself. You need to, you need to love photography that much that you want, you want to do it. Not that somebody's saying, do you want to do it? Or they're spoon feeding you. You need to say, I'm really interested in that. I'm going to go and do that. And if young photographers go and do that, they're going to get stuff published. And then that stuff, then you then start building up contacts. You start getting stuff. That's how you get into the industry these days, I think. I've been in the industry, you know, since I was 15. You know, I'm 37 now, 36. You know, um, so it's changed. The breaks, the kind of the way to get into it is it's changed an awful lot. But there's, the stories are still there, and people are still very interested in in photography and visual, and people are still interested in people. It's a good time for photography. So I, was a, I started off as a printer, so I worked in a dark room, and I, I think it's so, I feel sorry for young photographers now that don't get that experience, because for three, four years, I spent my whole life in the dark looking at other people's pictures, getting photographers coming in, looking at the contact sheets that I printed off, tell me what the best pictures were, and tell me to go and print them. I give them a print, then marking them what they want me to do with it. And that's how I learned. That's how I learned that. So, at that point, after that, I felt that I was good at editing. I knew pictures, I knew what worked, I knew what you know people were after. And then I took an apprenticeship uh, and spent the next three years as a printer and an apprenticeship photographer, working my trade, uh, making mistakes all the time, learning, looking at other people, reading, studying. I dedicated my life to it. I don't think I've ever thought I've made it. I, I don't think like that. That's not. That's never been my ambition to make it. My ambition was to take pictures, full stop. You know, I, I never got in it for the money, I never got in for the, the, the fame, the glamour. I just really enjoyed people and I really enjoyed taking photographs. It was like a shield for me, something to, to dream about, something to imagine something to have my ideas and my, my daydreaming that I used to get told off about. I used to, you know, I say I used to, I still do have a black book that I write down my ideas and if I waken up with an idea I still have it and I still write it down. It's just, it's just my life. I think a really interesting thing hmm. was um, uh, when I was younger, yeah. my, my, um, the person I'd done the work experience for forced me to go in for um, for competitions when I was younger. I wasn't really 
I didn't really see the. I didn't really think it was necessary. You know, I was enjoying my life. I was taking photos, and he forced me into it. I think possibly because he wanted me to get my name more out there. And I think I won the, the Scottish Young Photographer of the Year and the British Young Photographer of the Year. And that really launched me into a different sort of um, stage. And six months after that, I was offered a job for the Scotsman. And it was the first job for the Scotsman I'd ever employed somebody for 20, 30 years. And I was the youngest photographer by 40 years or something. And that was a really big, big move from a local agency to, at the, at, you know, one of the best newspapers, broadsheet newspapers in Scotland that really used pictures. And that gave me a real platform to sort of show off what I was capable of doing. I was really given, because I was that young sort of photographer, I was given a real free hand to do the sort of pictures that I wanted to do. Um, I was taught so well that I, that I, I knew what I was wanting to do. And that gave me a real, a real kick up the ass when I went there and it taught me an awful lot. And since then, you know, I, I went to the Herald uh, and then I, I, I moved to a bigger agency in London and then the Guardian. It's all, you know, it's all got bigger and better since then.